If you've ever been on car forums, seen listings for modified cars, or shopped for upgrades for your own car, you've probably seen these words. Stage one, stage two, should have gone to stage three, brother. But what exactly are these stages of tuning? Does it mean I'm going to double my horsepower? Is it completely BS? Or is there something more to it? Well, today we're gonna to try to figure out what those tuning stages really are and what they really mean. So get ready, get on board, and let's go brumper to brumper on tuning. Thank you to Omaze for sponsoring today's episode of Bumper to Bumper. We've partnered with Omaze once again to give away this amazing 2018 Dodge Demon and it's even gonna come with the Demon box. Hey, hey buddy. Stop watching me, it's not done yet. Doug, what's going on? Well, I heard you like demons with cool crates, so I thought, what the heck? Maybe I'll make one. Maybe someone will like me. I don't know. Well, you know, the Demon Crate, it comes with a set of drag slicks. It's got a bunch of tools. It even has an ECU that lets you run race gas. So, does, yours, does your crate have that? Well, since you asked, I got uh, my pigeon, Stuart, my shellbird. I got a little swath of Nolan's hair that he didn't know I got. Yeah. I have my envelope full of juice. Okay. Ew. Well, maybe, Doug, you should head on over to omaze.com slash donut media because they're giving away this 2018 Dodge Demon with taxes and shipping included. They're also going to give you $20,000 cash. I'm 15 grand into this project already. That would solve a lot of problems. You know what the best part is, Doug? Every donation supports the Ronald Reagan UCLA Medical Center, same place that saved our buddy James's life. Oh, okay. Oh, Stuart! Stuart! Oh, come on, Stuart! Oh, okay. oh you came back! Oh, Stuart! While there's no ISO 9001 standard for stages, tuning companies have used these parameters to describe some real differences among modifications. But there's no standardized bracket for what makes a modification stage one or stage two. So, are those numbers meaningless? Well, kind of, but not entirely. Let me explain. Ever since the debut of the original Gran Turismo video game, the phrase stage when describing tuning has become commonplace. In the game, you could upgrade your car based on a set of stages. Now this isn't a history show, so I'm not gonna keep talking about Gran Turismo, but this type of language basically didn't exist before that game. Now shortly after Gran Turismo took hold of our common car psyche, tuning companies started to label all kinds of performance parts with stage numbers. Were these any more informative than the tuning stages in Gran Turismo? Well, no, not really. Getting a stage two clutch in the late 90s didn't tell you how many foot pounds of clamping force it made, just that it was probably stronger than the same company's stage one clutch. In the beginning, it was basically just a way to market these parts. It was a way for a company to differentiate its range of products by adapting a video game convention that car enthusiasts were familiar with. But there was no generally accepted use of the terms like stage one or stage two and so on. One company's stage two widget might be less capable than another company's stage one widget. You just never knew and you still don't know. But we're gonna get to that. Stage numbers gradually evolved into a very rough guide for categorizing some upgrades based on how extreme their effects are. That kind of loose agreement is possible because of the fundamental tuning principle that supports all of this stage stuff. The more extreme a modification's effect on air or fuel, the more it depends on the presence of other mods to work. Some upgrades, like basic bolt-ons, a like cold air intake or larger exhaust, will get called stage one modifications because in a lot of cases, these don't depend on other upgrades. If you just add an exhaust to a car, you likely don't need an intake to get some advantage from it. A lot of modern cars already have really well-designed intakes, so an aftermarket intake might just make a better sound and not add any power. But on other cars, an intake and exhaust might work together, providing some additional power when you install both of them. More extreme upgrades like swapping out fuel injectors or turbos to deliver more fuel or air to your motor, they get called stage two. If you add a lot more fuel and a lot more air to your engine and you don't change anything else, the car won't receive any benefit. It actually will perform worse, potentially a lot worse. The really extreme modifications like a super big old honking turbocharger, those can be called stage three. If you add that upgrade and you don't do a bunch of the other necessary modifications, the car probably won't even run. 
Stage three is where you're really starting to hit the limits of street drivability. There isn't perfect agreement about which mods belong in which category, and some people will continue to argue. Us car guys, we love to freaking argue with each other. But nearly everyone can agree that a Garrett G42 Turbo capable of over a thousand horsepower couldn't possibly be a stage one mod, whatever a stage one mod is. Now, up until this point, we've only mentioned physical modifications you can do to your car, but that's actually only half of the staged upgrades. The other half, and possibly the more important half, is tuning your car's computer so that these modifications work harmoniously together. Oh, hardware, software. You need the software to make use of that fancy new hardware. An ECU tuner is a very specialized sort of programmer and mega car nerd who builds and installs a custom table of values or map. And this map tells the ECU how much fuel to send to the engine based on the current RPM and load. That's the amount of work your engine is doing at any particular time. Load needs to be based on something the computer can see. So it's often derived from throttle position in naturally aspirated cars and intake pressure for forced induction cars. And from load, RPM, and the displacement of the motor, the tuner can calculate how much air is getting into the engine across the entire rev range, which tells them how much fuel should be added to maximize combustion and therefore power at any point along that rev range. Now power can be further optimized using other tables of values. For example, if a car has electronically adjustable ignition timing, that can be tuned for each point of load and engine speed to properly make use of that extra air and fuel we get from our new shiny mods like a bigger turbo or a more free-flowing exhaust. Now that's all relatively modern custom ECU tuning, but way back in the day, around the time of Gran Turismo, creating a fuel map wasn't as easy as adjusting colorful values on your laptop. ECUs use chips of read-only memory, so the fuel map was permanently burned into a chip and the values couldn't be directly altered. A tuner had to create a fuel map in binary with just a bunch of values expressed as zeros and ones, so the ECU would tell the fuel injectors to remain open and then spray just the right amount of fuel. And they had to do that for every combination of load and RPM in that table, usually a couple hundred values. Then they'd burn that table onto a custom ROM chip that would be soldered onto the stock ECU, replacing the original chip. This is where the term chipping comes from. An alternative to that was just replacing the whole stock ECU with a standalone ECU. And when you do a full ECU swap, not only do you have to program the fuel map, but you have to manually add programming for anything else the ECU has to control. Even now with graphical interfaces and flashable ECUs, custom ECU tuning takes a ton of time and a lot of specialized knowledge and also requires a dyno, so it's expensive. Trust me, we spent a lot of time tuning those 350Zs in high-low and it wasn't cheap or successful. So let's set up a hypothetical example. Imagine I have a car, we're gonna call it the Donut Jerwagon, or Jerwagon, or Jerwagon. The Donut Jerwagon. Jerwagon. The Donut Jerwagon. <laughs> now this front engine rear wheel drive, completely fictional, but who knows, maybe Audi will make it. I don't know, Audi, you see this video, you wanna make my car? Hit me up. Now it's a two liter turbocharged inline four making 200 horsepower and 200 foot pounds of torque. Now those stock parts are already pretty good. And because it's well designed like most modern cars, if you start ripping off and replacing other parts, you're likely to start making the car a whole lot worse. The donut engineers, we work really hard to make sure everything worked together as a total system. That means if you wanna make the Jerwagen better, you're gonna have to start thinking about parts packages. And that's exactly what aftermarket tuning companies are doing when they introduce tuning stages. And there's one aftermarket tuner known to be the best for the Jovagen, Job's Performance Induction Super System. Got our boy Job on board. So what's Job's stage one upgrade for the Jerwagen? Well, simple. You reflash the ECU to change the boost limit and add a new fuel map to make use of all that extra air getting pumped into the engine. Easy as pie, and now you got 230 horsepower and 250 foot-pounds of torque. So Job's Stage 1 ECU tune follows the rough standard for a Stage 1 upgrade. You don't need to do any other modifications to the car to get the benefit. So what would be a Stage 2 for the Jerwagen? Well, we're a bunch of lucky duckies because Job's developed a Stage 2 ECU tune. And now it comes with a little bit more complicated recipe. 
The ECU tune was written for a Juragan with a bigger turbo, bigger fuel pressure regulators, and bigger fuel injectors to get enough fuel to make use of that air. So let's go ahead and replace those parts with aftermarket parts that's also developed by Job. This freaking guy he just does it all. A bigger turbo and more efficient air intake, higher flowing exhaust, and you can't forget the high capacity squirters. And we're ready to make 300 horsepower and 350 foot pounds of torque with our stage two tune. And of course, some folks are just never gonna be satisfied. And Job knows that. So he makes a stage three tune for an even bigger turbo. But this also requires a larger fuel pump, bigger intercooler, different camshafts, stronger valve springs, stronger clutch. And he recommends to reinforce the bottom end of the motor to handle all that extra force. That's your crank, your connecting rods, your bearing journals, your band caps, all that fun stuff. For a stage three tune to be worth it, we have to beef up our entire engine. But now we're making over 500 horsepower and 550 foot pounds of torque. Woo wee! At this point, you should have figured out what's going on with this stage business. Each stage is a recipe for performance. And tuning companies know there are certain cars like the Jure wagon that lots of people are modifying and tuning in similar ways. Essentially, these individual tuners figured out that there were some basic recipes for making more power that just work. But as always, the ECU needs the right program to make it all work together. We're now making over 500 horsepower and 550 pound-feet of torque. Audi or whoever, whatever manufacturer, I'm sure we're just gonna get freaking phone calls and knocks on our door to make this, this car. <laughs> and one last final piece of context to help show you why stage numbers are somewhat meaningless is by looking at these two examples of some Supra 2JZ stages from superstore.com. Now, Powerhouse Racing, they sell a stage four kit for the 2J with a turbo, headers, downpipe, a new air filter, all with the claim that you'll be making 520 rear wheel horsepower. Or you can get this kit for the same 2J with similar parts that will make 525 rear wheel horsepower, and it's a stage one kit. Zach, what the hell? <laughs> so what's the takeaway from all this? Well, if it was me, I would look at each individual company's stages and then compare them to another company's and try to get an idea how comparable they are. Because if you try to compare the two on face value by just using stage numbers, they're meaningless. So you gotta do your due diligence, look at what parts come on which package and see how it fits your application. So there's no need for you to go brag to your friends that you got a stage six intake. We're all just wanting to improve our cars and have fun driving them. We don't need to peacock around. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode of Bumper to Bumper. We will be back next week for another fire episode. Uh, in the meantime, follow us here at Donut on Instagram at Donut Media. Follow me at Jeremiah Burton. Thank you guys so much for watching. Click that like, click that subscribe. Uh, we're going to just keep pumping out content in 2021. We got a lot of good things coming down the pipeline. So uh, we appreciate you guys sticking with us. Until next week, bye for now.